please welcome to our show the host of News One Now, Roland Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like your coloring. Well, you know, it's an alpha thing. Are you an alpha? Life member, absolutely. My dad, my brother, and my brother-in-law, alphas. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And my brother, so. Yes. So, Roland, thank you for accepting my invitation. Mm -hmm. um, I called Roland over the weekend because I saw your, I saw you, mm -hmm. well, we already talked about this. I saw the rant. I wanted to reach out. I've never been um, scared you know, to face being wrong. And we were talking on the phone for so long that I said, well, just come to the show. Mm -hmm. Come to educate us all. So first, I want to apologize. I want to apologize to everyone that I might have offended regarding my remarks. You know, uh, apology, and I was wrong. So, Roland, help everyone understand why I was so wrong. Well, the reason I had such a visceral reaction is because uh, that's often been the criticism of HBCUs in, in the NAACP and really African Americans. Uh, and so when folks say, well, why would we need the NAACP? Well, I'll lay it to you like this here. The first slave came to America in 1619. The Emancipation Proclamation signed in 1863. Uh, 13th Amendment ratified in 1865. Reconstruction goes to 1877. Then there's this great compromise where Brother B. Hayes becomes president. They pull the troops out of the South. Jim Crow starts. So you now go through all the way through the uh, 20th century, 1960s, Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, Fair Housing Act. If you had to place a marker on when black folks have been technically fully free Americans, mm -hmm. it's 1970. That's only 46 years. I'm 47. So that means I was born into an America where I wasn't technically a fully free African American, uh, fully free American. And so black folks have been trying to force America to live up to its ideals of all men and women created equal. But the reality is that was nice on paper, but it hasn't been in reality. And so when it comes to our colleges, uh, we couldn't go to those schools. We, we, they were not, well, matter of fact, we couldn't read during slavery. You could be killed if you were found to be reading. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why uh, it is so critically important. And so NAACP founded after a race riot in Springfield, Illinois. So why is it that in 2016, we're still fighting for voter rights? We're still fighting for income, in, for income equality. And so though our institutions are allowing us to survive in America, even though we built this country. So, <clears throat> do you feel that the bigger issue is police brutality or lack of education? Well, first of all, for us, there are a multitude of issues. Okay. Uh, W.B. Du Bois said the most important issue of the 20th century is the race issue. That's still in the 21st century. Uh, and so race is tied to everything. Race is embedded in the DNA of America. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the great books out there is Gerald Horn's book dealing with uh, uh, the uprising in 1776, where he said the reason that the American Revolution took place, not because of, oh, the Tea Party and because of taxation without representation, he said the 13 colonies were wanted to continue slavery and were afraid the British would outlaw it. We built this country. America became economic power because of slavery. Uh, and so when you look at education, even though Brown versus Board of Education happened in 54, mm -hmm. we still are trying, you just had a, a desegregation order to desegregate a school district in Mississippi a month ago. They've been fighting it since 54. HBCUs are still underfunded. In Maryland, there's a current lawsuit to get the state to fund more. So for me, education still is, is the most vital issue facing us mm -hmm. because it's tied to income inequality, it's tied to uh, folks who are in prison, it's tied to every critical issue. And so if we are getting educated, then we are on a much better path to being empowered, but we still should fight the other issues as well. But if you don't have an education, you screwed in America. <laughs> Hmm. 
And so, and so, so, and so the reason why the HBCU part was so major, Wendy, is because I was just in North Carolina where they tried to put forth this bill to slash tuition to 500 bucks a semester to so-called help these schools. When I said, well, wait a minute, just adequately fund these schools. And so we fought back that particular bill. It got pulled off the table, but they literally were going to pass a law that could have put three HBCUs out of business. Hmm. I stand corrected. Um, <clears throat> now, as we know, the shootings in Baton Rouge and Minnesota were caught on camera. How can we hold the police more accountable without teaching our children to hate cops and well, fear them? Well, here's what's interesting. Uh, growing up in Houston, I wasn't raised to hate cops. I don't know of any African American who is raised to hate cops. The problem that we have in America is literally there is no accountability for cops. Less than 1% of cops involved in a shooting ends up being indicted. What, Less than 1%. Why? Because the blue wall? The, oh, the, the prosecutors? First of all, the blue wall, absolutely. The relationship between the district attorneys uh -huh. and the police. And also, the laws that we uh -huh. have set up are there to protect police officers. They just passed a law in Louisiana allowing, saying if you kill a cop, it's a hate crime. Well, first of all, in Louisiana, they put more folks in prison than any other state in the union. If you kill the cop, you're going to get the death penalty anyway. So trying to call it a hate crime is irrelevant. Same thing in terms of, you just saw two laws passed where they're trying to block access to the video in North Carolina. Saying that if oh. the dash cam video and the body cam video uh -huh, yeah. saying you have to get permission from the police chief or the sheriff to actually see the video. They don't want the level of accountability, and that's the problem. And so when cops say, oh, you know, uh, why y'all attacking us? No, the problem is cops talk about don't snitch in the streets. The greatest don't snitch policy in America <laughs> is in police departments. They don't want to talk. They don't want to turn each other in, and that's the problem. <laughs> and the reason Black Lives Matter has been so successful is because they have forced the most rigorous discussion on police brutality mm -hmm. and accountability in the history of America. We have never seen this level of discussion in America's history. People have to understand that you have to confront what's happening in this nation. Two, you have to say, change the laws. In New York, the Attorney General now investigates every police shooting because of an executive order. You can't have local DAs prosecuting cops because they are too close in a relationship. That has to change. I understand. One more thing I want to ask you. Uh, first of all, do you have children? No. Okay. But my wife and I have raised six of my nieces, so if you're paying for them, they're yours. <laughs> Roland, um, what do we tell our young black kids, boys or girls, because my husband and I, mm. we go through this constantly with Kevin. Before Trayvon, it's like, take the hood off. Don't put your hands in your pockets. You call an officer, officer, and sir. What, what do we, what do you tell them? The, hard, the, the first thing you tell them is, your job is to get home. Oh. Now, that's hard, because again, I go back to technically being a full American. You got the videos of white kids acting a fool, swinging on cops and they get arrested, but black kids swung on a cop, uh, prepare to have a body bag and have a funeral. And so what we have to do is, first of all, again, we, we, we all have the talk, and that is how you behave, what you say, don't make any quick movements. Right. I mean, and it's literally say, basically, can I breathe? Right. I mean, is, is it okay that I can breathe? Right. But, but you go through all of that, uh, but, but you also maintain your dignity. And that is, if I'm being treated badly by a cop, I'm gonna get through that situation, uh -huh. but I'm looking at the cop number, I'm looking at uh, the license plate, because I'm calling somebody yeah, yes. after this is over. Yes, yes. And I'm gonna follow through to make sure that person gets punished for their behavior. Yes. But you gotta get home. And, I, and that's hard. That's hard when you're being disrespected. Yeah. And you know you've been disrespected, but your first duty is to get home to mom and daddy or to your husband or your wife. By the way, I was at a drugstore, and it was very, very empty, and I was the only woman on the cosmetic aisle, but I was black, and not everybody knows who the hell Wendy is, mm -hmm. right? And, and this literally was this week. And so all of a sudden, over the loudspeaker, true story, I heard, um, an associate in the cosmetics? I wasn't asking for a question. I right. know what that means. That's cue for black girl stealing. No, absolutely. So it, ha it happens 
all, all the, the time, time, all day. And we got to keep the conversation going. Thank you for schooling me and maybe some of my audience who didn't yeah. know. And thank you for being here. We thank you. It's Roland Martin, everybody. This show is called News One Now, and it airs weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.